just talked about isotopes and we're going to use isotopes to get back to these average molar masses that we've talked about before. And remember, it is these numbers underneath each of the chemical symbols on the periodic table that are the average molar mass for each of these elements. But how does that, how do we get that? That's what we're going to talk about now. So the average molar mass is the average molar mass. Uh, so it's under each chemical symbol and it is averaged over all stable isotopes found in nature. So, and this is automatically done for us by the periodic table. As we mentioned before, carbon is 98.89% carbon 12 with a molar mass of 12.0000 grams per mole. The other stable isotope is 1.11% uh, 1, 1, 1 carbon 13 with the molar mass given there. And this is a straight average. So if you wanted to know the average over these, you'd do what's called a weighted average. Uh, you would say in here, so average molar mass is going to be the uh, mass of isotope number one. And I'll put this in parentheses. Mass of isotope number one times its percent plus mass of isotope number two times its percent and this is a completely general formula so dot 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 just means there could be a third one there could be a fourth one you'll see third ones i don't know if we'll see any fourth ones um, in the problems that you'll be solving, but it's a completely general system. Um, uh, oh, divided by 100%. And I use percents here, so you may see if you go to Khan Academy or elsewhere that they use fraction and what are called fractional abundances instead of percents. So uh, those would just be a slightly different way, but totally equivalent way of doing it. Uh, you'll get the same answers. And hopefully we'll get the answers that are on the periodic table. So uh, mass of isotope one is 12.0000 grams per mole. Its percent is 98.89%. And um, we're not gonna spend very much time uh, talking about this, but you can see that carbon 12 is 12.0000. Carbon-12 is actually the definition of an isotope that has a mass. And so it is really 12.00000. It, it has infinite sig figs with it. I just cut it off at four here um, but because that's going to be more than we need anyway. But there is a definitional aspect of carbon-12 here that doesn't really concern us, to be honest, um, at our layer of the chemistry onion. And um, mass, I will say if you have any questions about that, please do ask. I'm happy to talk about this or anything that we have to do beyond class, especially during office hours or by email. Over 100%. And let's type this into our calculators. We have 12.0000, which I'll just enter as 12, times 98.89. Now, calculators do follow order of operations, so I'm gonna hit the plus sign, and then I'm gonna still do the multiplication here, and it will, it will know to multiply these two numbers before adding it to this number. So, times, I hit times already, oop, 13.0033 time it did not <laughs> i speak too quickly i think my calculator is too simple so all right so let's do it again 12 times 98.89 all right so i get 1186.68 and shh, i'm going to leave off units for a minute all right we'll put them back in a minute and then 13.0033 times 1.11 I get 14.433663. I know I have way too many sig figs, but we'll worry about that later. 
In fact, this is lecture, so all your answer, well, we're actually, for molar mass here, we're actually gonna make sure we compare it to the number on the periodic table. And the numbers on the periodic table all have four sig figs. So we are gonna keep four sig figs, but this is a special case. Normally, three sig figs is always fine for lecture. Um, over 100%. And again, we kept way more than that. But let's let's see how it works out. So 1186.68 plus 14.433663 equals divided by 100. We get 12.011 uh, equals... 12.01, well, and we're only keeping four sig figs, and it will match the periodic table. I'll get it in a second. Checking our units, we can see that our percent units of percent cancel out, and we're left with grams per mole, which is good. That's what we're, average molar mass should have for units. And 12.01. And even, in fact, um, the it was 12.011, if you go to uh, periodic tables that have five sig figs for molar masses for carbon, you'll see 12.011. So it is, it is, there are more sig figs out there for us. Uh, and that's averaging over, there's only two stable isotopes. We averaged over both of them. So, uh, and we got the number on the periodic table. So that is, that's where those numbers come from. And somebody has done all the work for us. Uh, oh, and two, the average molar mass is the mass of one mole of substance if you measure it in the lab. So if you are doing an experiment with carbon in the lab or anything that contains carbon, you are getting 12.01 grams per mole. You can use that for any of your calculations. Now, magnesium has three stable isotopes. We've got uh, their abundance, which is another word for uh, how much it occurs in nature. And we're going to do uh, protons and neutrons as well here. So uh, magnesium, well, let's get our periodic table. Magnesium's right here. Magnesium has 12 protons for all atoms of magnesium. We like those kinds of questions. <laughs> um, now, number of neutrons, we have to do the subtraction here. So we'll have 12 neutrons, 13, and 14 neutrons. And you can see that uh, if there's, the, the mass numbers are very close to the grams per mole, but not exact. The only one that is exact is carbon 12, and that was our definition. Carbon 12 is 12.000000, et cetera. But everything else is just relatively close. So, uh, and at least one of the problems on the homework asks you to write it out just like this. So, showing all of your calculation. Please do it. All right, so we're going to do this one more time. And this is going to be, oh, so average molar mass. Is going to equal mass times percent plus mass times percent plus mass times percent. Uh, I'm going to write it out. 23.985 grams per mole, 78.99% plus 24.986 grams per mole. 10.00% plus 25.983 grams per mole, and I'll stack them up there to save space. Percent over 100%. And uh, please make sure that you check uh, this and all the calculations that we do uh, as you go through. 23.985 times 78.99. Now I'm gonna get fancy, or I'm gonna try and get fancy. I'm gonna use my parentheses buttons because now I know my calculator doesn't uh, do the math in order of operations that I'd hoped. All right, so plus 
open parenthesis, 24.986 times 10. Plus, open parenthesis, 25.983 times 11.01, .01, close parenthesis, equals. And I get 2,430.5. That's all of the top done using parentheses correctly, I think. Over 100%, so I'm going to divide by 100. And I get 24.305. And uh, let's see, our periodic table actually has 24.30. I'm not sure what's going on with the rounding there, um, but close enough for me. So, uh, and you will find, hmm, I'll have to look into that actually. So that's our second example. Here's a third example. And I do want you to work this example in your notes. I will be looking for it. And please write it out just like I did.